Hello and welcome to another Replay Analysis 7.27C. Today we have uh, Chuck Noel playing the AM here um, with the awesome name. What is the name? Hang on. I saw it. Elgin Pig Venus. I had to be very careful in terms of how I say this. I obviously don't want to get, say it incorrectly because there's so many wrong ways you can do this. Nonetheless, this is the request by him. He was, uh, I think this is legend uh, slash ancient level. Um, he was the AM in this game. He said he had some issues um, and just kind of looking through. Obviously, when, when we do these analysis, we can look at games you stomped in and learn nothing, right? Because you did everything well, so to speak. But if we're talking about um, the games that you lost, there's a lot to learn here, right? And so I think that this is why I appreciate the fact that you're kind of what all the game submissions that you've done have been losing games and it seems like all of the players that i've been analyzed are not good but it's more the fact that like you learn a lot more in your losing games than anything else so what we're going to do is we're going to do player perspective on this am which has got the nice really really cool persona here um but it's going to be player persona per player perspective for the first 10 minutes um 10 15 minutes to understand what you're looking at how your camera works the laning which is super important for the am because obviously you win or you win or lose based off of your laning right um, and kind of like chess where the early game sets you up for the mid game and the late game. Um, and so obviously the early game being super important for you as an AM. Um, okay, so you're going into the lane right now and you have to think of what, what am I laning up against? You see the Sven is mid. Um, so you're probably going to go up against a Necro Earthshaker, right? Um, you're just kind of predicting yourself, right? What, so what is it that you need? What, what can scare you, right? Getting that fissure blocked. Um, obviously, the amount of sustain that's going on. Obviously, the disruptor is going heavy on the... Oh, you're going for the courier? Oh, uh, uh, okay, okay, okay. You went for it. Um, one thing to start, though, is that right now, the lane is in a kind of a bad spot. And I understand that the disruptor is pushing things out. But it's either on you or him. Hang on, let's see how this works out. Um, to put the lane in a good spot... Oh, the Fisher catches you guys on the right side, though. Um, okay, so Quop actually dives in. Again, we're not only going to look at you. Ooh, where did the Earthshaker go? Oh, he's going to get it. He's going to get it. He's faster. Yeah. That was really bad micro by the Disruptor there. Just sacrificing the Courier. Obviously pretty important. Uh, doesn't give you first blood amount of gold, but it gives you a decent amount of gold, and obviously your team will appreciate it. It's pushing under tower. Um, honestly, this Disruptor here probably shouldn't be here. I mean, because if, if he gets a fast level 2, which he just got, um, and you're not really doing any damage to this guy, right? And you're looking, you're concentrating on the last hits, but it's hard because it's under tower. Yeah, you missed a couple there. So the Disruptor needs to be back, start stacking, pulling, creating um, space in that sense. Um, but one thing to note is that I feel like you could be doing more damage. If there's anything that you can be doing early is... Just taking away his mana. That This is why you want to be trading with this guy, especially early. And the fact that you haven't clicked on him and you don't know that he doesn't really have the the healing um, items. right? You have a Tango. You have a Salve of all things. right? So you can trade because you have HP regen. This Necro, he just has his own skills. right? You didn't click on him and he's got the Fairy Fire, mind you. Um, but you want to take away as much mana as possible so that he casts less spells. He has less healing for you. And you're wasting a little bit of time now. By the way, the camera work, hands off. It's not me. It's you. Um, so this is kind of... Yeah, that creep is going to... So what are you trying to do? Right? You're not at the creep wave. And this is this helps him out. But you're too scared. You're too timid. Right? You haven't clicked on the, the Earthshaker once. Hang on. Let me just click on him. He's got two tangos and he's got a boots. So you can't really run away aside from the blink. Um, okay, but now you go for the pull through, which is good. Okay, good, 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 good. And then tank the other creeps. Do they get detoured? They do. Uh, but you need to get that creep. Ah! Okay. Yeah. And another thing to note is that the Necro wants to be spamming his spells. You're not in the creep wave. You're not hitting creeps. And you're not really affecting the Earthshaker. Right now you're wasting time. Right? Every second you want to be getting some sort of last hit. You want to get some sort of XP. Some sort of way to accelerate yourself. Like, you're taking tower damage. Okay. Oh, you missed that last hit. Okay, you're going to have to practice last hitting under tower. That kind of sticks out to me. Um, and then another thing is that the Necro right now, look at his mana. He's full. Because you didn't respect him. Or he didn't respect you in the sense that you were not aggressive. 
like going up against an AM, the most annoying thing is when they're aggressive, they push you out of lane, they steal all of your mana, so you can't cast any spells. And then he gets a ring of health, and then he's just infinite in lane, right? He just completely bullied me out of the lane. Like, you need to be that aggressive, right? You're giving too much space to the Necro, who, in my opinion right now, is kind of... He's taken over. He's level 4 versus your level 3. Um, I don't know what that counter spell was for, but... Uh, that was really bad. Okay, that glimpse. Glimpse for what? 4 minutes and 20 seconds. 15 and 2, right? Okay, so... Okay, you got your Ring of Health. Good, good. But you TP it on back. I disagree with that TP. Okay, but you wanted that creep, creep wave really bad. Okay, okay. Because somebody needs to get the runes. And I feel like your disruptor needs to be out there. Um, okay, okay. So now you're farming it up. You're just taking the lanes. Okay, that's fine. I mean, I to be honest, I would just tank it. I wouldn't actually do right-click damage. Because, again, you're pushing it. But if you feel like you've got enough creeps, you're fine. I'm just nitpicking because I'm finding every little thing, right? Um, some things are not the best decisions. And you obviously have your own reasons and options, but I'm just saying that some things that you can do a little bit better, like nice last hit, deny, good, good. So you don't have any problems when you're by yourself. It's when you're with other people. It's per performance anxiety. Um, not just in the bedroom, I guess. Um, all right, I'm not here to judge. Okay, but okay. So you've got, you're just cutting that one because you want to pull the next wave, but there is no wave, okay? And another thing is that seeing is that you might want to get a stick because he just spams a lot of spells, that Necro. You want to kind of def def like deter him from getting all those spells off, right? If you get something out of it, it might help you. You know what I mean? Just building up some charges so that when you do get jumped on, you'll be in a little bit of a better position. Um, hang on, let me just change this real quick. Give me a second. Uh oh. Alright, so still under lane. There we go. Alright. Um, so more farming. Okay, you gotta be careful with how things are under tower and how, how, how it pushes, right? So this is where the time you don't need your disruptor to help you zone here. This is the time where the disruptor should be looking to pull, right? And this is kind of on your support, not knowing how to play. Um, his lane mechanic, so to speak. Okay, he's looking to do the pull now, but it's super late. That Fisher will block that. Yeah. Like, he needs to be stacking and pulling this, the pull camp. Not this one. I mean, yeah, he can get it. But, look, he's level 3. And at this point, he really can't... He's going to get zoned out himself, right? He's lost that power spike. And this is the po problem with the power position 5. Um, okay, another Fisher. And wow, this Earthshaker, does he have Soul Ring? No, he's just been willy-nilly with these uh, Fishers. <clears throat> so, okay. 29 and 3, not the highest. Oh, that Earthshaker, yeah. Denying you from the pulls. So this Earthshaker is being a good harasser, right? This is a position 4, this is what you want to do. You want to stop, excuse me, stop all the pulls. Make the life dis uh, just difficult, right? And look at how passive you are. 41 to 10 versus a 30 and 3. Right? I don't care what happens in the next, you know, 30 minutes of the game. If you're looking at the first 10 minutes, you're losing this 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 game. Right? We could almost talk like a 7-3 advantage for the Necro. He makes his life easier. And I need DCs right there. That's uh I mean it's not like he was gonna get away, but I think he thought if I DC that Reaper Scythe won't kill me, but no. Um but you need to think of yourself as putting yourself up in that advantage where you can be aggressive, you can make sure that you're doing the damage to him. He's zoning and respecting what you're doing, right? That's how you win the lane. Every, if every single game you're going in behind, you're going to have a rough time because your other lanes are not always going to win, right? And generally speaking, you can only really rely on yourself, okay? So it comes back to... Like, if other people, you know what I mean? Like, other people keep fighting with you. Other people are not good. You know what I mean? Like, you're always blaming other people. But in this case, it's clearly what you can do better. It's how you can change and how you can be a better player. About how to understand how to zone, how to dominate this lane, even as a position one. Okay? And I think that this is the type where, 
I think that you should probably watch like the Arteezys of the world, even Eternal Envy. I feel like those guys are really good heroes in terms of because eventually they find farm. They have really good farming patterns. They understand how to play the game. And even in a bad lane, what do they do? Right? Say so either they snowball super hard or they find ways to come back. And right now you're looking at how do I come back in this game? Because once level six happens, I mean, you're already level six, as is the Necro, but that scythe cooldown has happened. So you need to be a little bit careful, right? Because at, he could get you low. Potentially, he could burst you down, especially with a fissure that comes out of nowhere, right? So the potential to die is there. And how do you get more farm, right? So this is going to be more on the lines of your disruptor. Just be like, hey, fuck off, disruptor. I don't need you. Just get into the jungle, like back here. Hang on, I can't. I can't pause it, but like back where my mouse is right now, near the outpost and beyond, just have him stack. Because right now he's not helping you. He's actually just leeching XP and creating, because there's there's no value add. He, he can't really do any damage to this Necro who is pretty much full. Um, if we're looking at just items, he's got a, a wand. So he's actually gaining charges and making your life dis difficult. It's okay to be like, dude, your, your, your value is not... You know what I mean? Like it's you're you're not helping me. You're actually hurting me now. So it's totally cool for you to just get on out of here. Like you can tell the guy to do that, right? Or, and once he creates those stacks for you, then you can just kind of back up. You take those stacks, let him take the lane, and let him get some XP back. Because look at this. What is he doing? What is he doing? Like this is a bad position five. Okay. I, I hope he's not your buddy, and I hope he doesn't watch this video. I I but he has. Things to learn about how to get it better, right? It's 9 minutes and 45 seconds. What is this guy doing? Is he stacking? Oh, he's DCing. Okay, well, you know, can't blame him for DCing there. But, like, he should be stacking, and then he should be moving into position for getting that rune, which is going to happen in 10 minutes, right? You need to think ahead. Always be like, what is the next the next objective that I should be doing as a support? Should I be rotating? Should I be doing? What should I be doing? But right now, you're just hurting your own AM by literally just... Helping, you know, the Necro get charges um, and sapping XP. And look at this. There's an 8 to 7 lead, right? Like this, 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 this orb does nothing, right? All right, we're going to do a free cam now because I'm, okay. Like he's got the, he's got the cloak. Like he's pretty much full. Like, and, and through this all, look at this. 10 minutes and 15 seconds. This is free ice cream. Why is no one going for free ice cream? Who doesn't like ice cream? Who are you? Why don't you like to ice cream, Disruptor? Alright. By the way, Sven, Midas... While I do think Midas was buffed, I think that um, Mask of Madness is better for you. I, I've tried it out in a couple of my games. I think that it just accelerates your farm to no other. Plus, you do more damage so that you can fight. Um, but Necro is actually very low. He does have his boots up in the second. He's got the hood as well. And Quap is now in position. Um, the Fisher, nice three-man Fisher there. Oh, but the Mana Void. Oh, the timing on that. And the Echo, have they completely turned this around? The two-man Ice Path. Oh my gosh, the Dual Breath. And the Quap has to just run for his life. That was completely off. Oh, that was a disaster. That was a disaster. I, I couldn't say anything worse. And he doesn't have Blink for another five seconds. Yeah, oh my gosh. He's completely turned that around. Yeah, you might get the Earthshaker, but for what? Yeah. Okay, two things. This is the type where if the Quap is going to TP on in, and the Dire was totally... Oh my gosh, and they get him. So they got a 4 for 1. Uh, and the Focus Fire really not doing a whole lot of damage. This is a support Wind Ranger. So, oh no, it's not. It's an offlaner. Uh, does kill the Jakiro, and the Haunt in needs to run for his life, and he's so slow, and he doesn't have a stick, and he's going to slowly die. Okay, that fight was bad for a number of reasons. Your Disruptor was not 6. He didn't have Static Storm. He, um, the Spirit Breaker wasn't charging in. You need to sync those things up as a team. Okay? Very difficult to do in a pub. I totally get that. Yes. Um, yeah, I always look at Ruins as free ice cream. You definitely need to get ice cream. Um, but okay, so the thing is, is that when you're going to take a fight like that... You need to... The Spirit Breaker needs to initiate his charge from wherever it is. From the top or whatever. I think he was in the mid mid lane at that time. That needs to happen, right? So that when the fight is going on, all of a sudden the Spirit Breaker comes on through. Second thing is that this Disruptor, not being level 6 at this point, is a travesty. I don't know if he doesn't have the, the Tomb or whatnot. But if you don't have 
level 6 by tw 10 minutes, you're not having a good game, right? And the fact that it's almost 13 minutes and he's not level 6, you're having an even worse game. Necro is going to make life tough. The Sonic Wave, I would have waited a little bit just for him to go into the form. But man, he's got the Enchant Totem. A little bit of stun action here. You're Okay, you do kill the Earthshaker here. And that's going to be the stop. This is the time where you Sonic Wave. He did not time it properly. He went early and he does kill the Quap. And this Necro is just tearing it up, man. He just turns it around. He's like, okay, you want to go at me? Let's go. Let's go. Spear Breaker's like, ah, uh, ah, uh, run, run. I don't think that that's enough damage, but here's the Wind Ranger. Uh, you don't have Shackle, and you're literally just right-clicking. This is like the most pathetic thing, damage I've ever seen. Naked Javelin, 13 minutes. That's been rough. Don't have Focus Fire. Like, really, you gotta understand when the damage, the magic damage is happening, right? Every time he goes into form, that's when you need to do it. Like, now! Now you Power Shot. But Earthshaker's back into the action. All the way from a TP'd on in. A Fisher? Okay, does catch up the Wind Ranger. That's the one you want. And that's going to be a dead Wind Ranger, I think. Yeah. This Wind Ranger is not good. Not going to lie. Positioning has been terrible. Itemization is not good. Um, but yeah, it's kind of rough. Like, having a rough game. And this Necro right here has got mech. So, an even rougher time. And through that all, the Spectre is just happily farming. All that space created. AM, what have you been doing? You got almost Battle Fury. Um, if we're looking at net worth... Don't care about disruptor dying. Like this, this, this guy is your problem. And it comes back to the laning. Oh, nice ice path. Enchant totem. Echo. Just trying to secure that through. And the the mech there just healing up everybody. And this necro just becoming a problem, right? So this is great itemization by this necro here, right? Like what is on this team? Okay, the quap, disruptor, spirit breaker even have a lot of magic damage, especially early. And what does he do? He gets the hood. Right? So he's going to go straight up into Pipe. I think it's on the way next. Let me just see. Yeah. Oh, no. He's going to go Greaves. So it's even better. So he's going Hood, which is going to keep him alive, make him super tanky. And then now he's got Greaves. So his heal and sustain is just insane. And as an offlaner, this is perfect. Right? You don't care. Like, notice that the Spectre, like, yeah, he's by himself. But Necro, by doing this, is actually helping the team, like, immensely. Right? Because... If he's pushing this lane, forcing somebody to always be at, at that T2, and then nobody can get rid of these guys, and they're winning every single team fight bottom, like this is just space created for the Spectre, right? Push it out. Nice Fisher there. This this Urshaker's kind of been on point with his blocks. Macropire, oh you that was a waste. And you created space for the Wind Ranger to run on out of there. We'll talk about that one later, Chirpass. That was not good though, but nonetheless, Necro here just you know, come at me, right? And through that all, Sven, happily farming. Almost has his axe. He's going to be Superman in a second. Disruptor is still not level 6 at 15 minutes. This is a problem. He gets glimpsed on back, buying a little bit of time. The Ice Path is going to miss. The Fisher's on the end of this one, but the Haunt is now in position, but he hasn't been able to get that one off. He does dive with the Sonic Wave. Okay, not the worst fight by the Radiance. Dyer here getting very, very low. He probably needs to do the Walk of Shame back to the Fountain because this guy can't do anything when you're at level 5. Oh, okay. All right. I saw the blink in. Freaked out a little bit. Peed a little in my pants. Not going to lie. I feel bad for this Disruptor. Like, all he's like, all I want is be is level 6. I want to be a real boy. Um, but, okay. Another thing is that this Spirit Breaker has not really made an impact. And this is where Spirit Breakers will be bad, okay? When you have heroes like this who aren't making an impact in all the other lanes, right? He wants to be roaming, ganking all the lanes, making things super uncomfortable for, like, the Spectre, who just wants to happily farm. But through lack of vision, look at this. Look at how dark the Radiant side is. They've had to go on super defensive with their rewards uh, versus the, the Dire side, right? Which has got this nice little high ground ward here. Um, I mean, that's pretty much the extent of that, but, like, he wants to be ganking. He wants to be all over this place, right? And Stag Storm does catch out the Necro, who's gonna just walk on out of that. He walks in the Macro Pyre, who you'll be fine. He gets glimpsed on back. The Shackle doesn't really matter. The Fisher blocking him, keeping him up alive. And yeah, this guy, he didn't even pop Hood through that all. The Reaper Scythe is gonna kill the Wind Ranger, turning that around. And that's probably not a good fight for you to go in. I think that you need to get out of this. You need to give up. The Echo securing him in forward. So, you do have Battle Fury, which is a right time to fight. I'm okay with that. But, the way things went, it's kind of like you ignore the Necro. Find the guys that are going to control you. And look at this team fight. 
This team fight is sick. They have the Echo, they got the Stormhammer, they got the Ice Path. You know what I mean? Like, Necro is not the guy that you want to do. All he does is sustain in the lane, keep his team alive with the Greaves and everything, but, like, if he, he can't really control anybody else. Like, you need to control, and, and in terms of priority, you need to focus the Jakiro and the Earthshaker. Once those guys are done... Oh, my gosh. God. Superman! What, what is that song? I, I forgot the Superman song. I don't know. Okay, anyways... <laughs> Somebody will clip that, I'm sure. But we need the, uh, like, he's super strong, right? The, the amount of control that they have. And your target prioritization is not good. You need to focus on the Jakiro. Make sure that the control is gone. And through it all, BKB, this is a must. Manta's not going to do it. Um, you know what I mean? Like, Pipe isn't enough. Like, they have a an insane amount of magic damage and the amount of control that they provide. And this is probably why... This game will go even worse for you. Because I feel like... Hang on, let me see what item you have. You don't even have an item queued up. Fine. But you're going to try to split push. And this is where the type where... I think it was Ritsu. He had an awesome game where their team was losing. But the thing is, is that he... What he did was he split the map. Okay? He didn't just jungle in the creeps. Like, this is a bad TP. What you want to be doing is cutting this creep wave. This creep wave here cutting this creep wave here so even before the creeps match and so you constantly just blink on out basically you're like this super annoying guy that isn't just gonna hit where the creep waves are gonna meet which is very predictable and will be right here but you want to be one step ahead of the creep wave okay so every 30 seconds we know because we know game mechanics that a new creep wave is going to be spawned, like this one, right? So seeing as that this is the target that you want to be going, yeah, there are kills throughout, but we don't really care. We're doing a lesson. This creep wave is going to be pushing. So you've got to know where this creep wave is, right? Where is it? You look at your own creep wave. The exact opposite of it, hit the T2, would it just hit the T2 here, right? So you need to know where these creep waves are and constantly kill them. That will buy you a minute because, again... You're creep skipping, right? So this is the first creep wave at zero seconds. The next one was 30 seconds, which you've cut. And then the one after that one will be the one minute one. So this will delay the game. Because if you don't have creeps at the towers, you don't have, you have backdoor protection, right? So hitting towers, hitting creeps, and like the high ground is very difficult for them to, to barrel through because they have that. And now you're going against, against the Necro who bounced him out of the field. Uh, but the nice echo... And he's going to out-heal through that and just completely gerbait you. Three for nothing. Yeah, okay, so now you're going for the creep. Okay, this is good. This is good. Realizing you really can't fight. Okay, this this I'm fine with. But you need to fix all of the lanes, which is very difficult to do. And actually, Quap needs to be doing that. But this will, how, this will get you back in the game. And if you can find this courier, that would be gravy. But if not, you know, it is what it is. Um, I think... Uh, uh... You missed the courier. Okay. You need to find the bottom one, right? This is the dangerous one, right? Because this one's pushing. You got to find the bottom one, right? And so people need to then, they can't just death ball at five man and just push towers. So this, you're providing space. So you've done some elements of this split push, which is really good. Um, but you got to make sure you don't get caught out. That is the biggest thing. Um, yeah, you should be fine here. You TP on back, but that's probably not the one you want to TP to. Um, because you see two are top, right? Like the creep waves shows the specter. Yes, 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 haunt. But you need to get split out the enemy team. All right, this is the thing where you have different play styles, right? You have a death ball style. Like what beats a death ball? That's split push, right? Because if you split push, the enemy heroes need to scatter and they need to kind of deal with the fact that you're pushing all the different lanes, right? Um. And so what beats Split Push? Split Push is beaten by ganking styles, right? Their team right now is a definitely a death ball push. That's their style. So you need to split push to counter their their interactivity. It's the whole triangle of love, okay? Um, that's the way you need to kind of think of yourself and create yourself um, to beat this play style, right? So you need to be one step ahead, which is good. You don't want to get cut out. Uh, you will lose to Spectre. Who has Radiance. Ooh, Superman! Okay. When you're running for your life, okay, what is the safer play? You need to go probably outside here. Get lucky. 
If they have a ward up here, you're probably fucked anyways. But this is the most dangerous one. Because this is probably this area, and I'll draw it out here, is that you probably expect somebody to be farming. And in this case, the Sven was. So it's like an insight. It's like, where would people not be? Definitely not here. Who's going to be hiding in the trees out on the top, right? So if you're going to blink anywhere, you need to blink to someplace safe. You got to be where people are not, and that's probably that place, okay? So moving forward, please do that. Um, Quap here has been like almost a non-factor. Uh, Ice Path catches out the Disruptor, who's... Oh my gosh, this Kiro is double the level of this Disruptor. Fisher on the wrong side, though. Spectre get... Uh, charge on forward and you're going to commit a lot for that Jakiro who can just pretty much out heal that the haunt has now been used and they're backing around trying to get the wind ranger who yeah has been lackluster uh nice echo there oh my gosh and you blinked it to it you got the four man fisher because of that oh no it's not worth fighting sir you don't have bkb you don't have manta and to be honest i think bkb is the better choice but okay you need to think of your teammates right now as uh <laughs> Shrizinga, yeah. Um, you need to think of yourself as how do I win the game? And you're thinking team fight is a good idea, right? It's not. You need to split push. You need to fight. You need to just constantly just blink forward. Be aggressive. Be aggressive. Constantly push. Keep pushing it out. Buy yourself time. Like, look at these guys. Look at how slow these guys are. Yeah, they have blink, but they're going to try to catch you, right? Create space. Create space. Push it through. Push this one. Cut this one out. Like, you know that the creep wave, once you kill this one, make your way to the mid lane. Blink here. Farm this here. And then continue to make your way forward. Move yourself here. By cutting, like, this one's will meet. Your, your Wind Ranger, and you have enough to just clear out the creeps. Once these creeps die, they don't have anything until this one. Now, if you cut this creep wave, that means they have to wait for the next one, which hasn't even spawned yet. What is that doing? That's creating space and time. It's buying you time. So this is a textbook example of how to play the split pushing AM style. And that's super good. You got that last hit. Make sure that stupid Jakiro with his two heads doesn't get you. And you blink away. Good. Space created. But you need to be careful. This is super dangerous. You have to expect that the enemy team will be right here. And you don't really have... You don't want to get caught out by this Earthshaker Sven. Like, they, they have the potential to kill you. You need to be aggressive. You need to be in this lane. And, and to be honest, at this point, I would buy wards myself. Right? Place good words, because your, your team is probably not going to be able to do it. They're free. There's really no reason. Fighting, it doesn't matter. The only thing that's going to keep you in this game, and I, I'm not a huge fan of that buyout right there, because you don't have buyback, but push the lane, push the lane, push the lane. Create space. This is the thing, is that if you're the position one, it's your responsibility to carry the game, okay? To extend the game. And... Like, your team, all they have to do is kill the creeps. They have to stop the creeps. You need to be cutting these creep waves. You need to be one step ahead. This is probably not good. You let your illusions attack it. That's fine. But you need to be cutting the creeps constantly. Like, you need to be creating this line of creeps. There's no point in coming back. You cannot fight. Why would you TP back? Right? You have three people dead for 20 seconds. Meaning that you're going to sit around for 20 more seconds. Your value add, and the only way you're getting back in this game, is by farming out here. If somebody TPs back in and tries to deal with you, then I'm cool with the fact that you TPing in. Because now you can take a fight 5v4. You have a numbers advantage. Now you're stick sticking around. What have you done? You've gone on twin Tinder. You know? You're, 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 you're maybe grinder. I don't know. I'm not here to judge. But you know what I mean? Like You're not doing anything. Right? And this is kind of why if you want to get to the next level, you need to understand how to cut the creeps, how to push the lane, and to force them to deal with you. If you're all over the map, it's so annoying. It's like, have you played against a good NP player? A Nature's Prophet, that is, where he's teleporting everywhere. And yeah, this guy's just dead. So you need to control the game. You need to figure things out, right? It'll really get you, like, I think that you've given up in this game. Which I'm sad for because I feel like you should never give up. Um, but it looks like you've called GG. I think that that's it because um, that's pretty much it. You've kind of gone AFK now. So I hope you learned something because you got to learn how to split push. You got to figure out how to. You can you can win this game. You can come back. I know it seems like insurmountable. This 30k and you're gonna die now. 
get echoed in your fountain for what? Now the storm hammer comes on through, but yeah, and that's GG. So quick game there. Thank you so much uh, for that replay submission. Um, obviously a lot to learn in AM. I really think that you need to understand how to just get to the different lanes. Cut creeps, cut creeps, cut creeps. Buy yourself time. Get yourself back in the game. You can win this game. I know it seems like this guy falls off, Necro falls off. The only one you really need to worry about is obviously the Sven, who can kind of slice and dice you. But, and the Spectre, of course. Like, those are the two, but he really didn't even have the items. If you're looking at itemization, you have two big items, he's got two big items, right? You're not that far off. I mean, it seems like 4K is a lot, right? But it, and, it, and it is, but your team, like this Disruptor was an absolute fail. This, this Wind Ranger didn't really help you. And the Spirit Breaker, of course, needs to kind of be better in terms of his... Uh, his rotations early and especially with the ganking piece so okay i hope you learned something thank you so much uh please give a like and subscribe if you like what i'm doing i do this every single day uh one to four plus eight gmt i'm doing of course an analysis replays analysis for your games so let me know dm me your game and i'll get to it and i'm going to just do what i do here in terms of uh analyze and figure out what you did wrong if you did things right of course i'll point those out as well but generally speaking in these losing games we usually find what you did wrong so uh, my name is Holler TV, or my name is Holler. You can find me at Holler TV, and I'll catch you guys next time. Thank you so much.